dirty lizards and Joe's mum until you're cured. You see a man, well-fed and wealthy, but stress has lined his face and narrowed his waist. He tries to ignore your presence, fails. He sighs. See here. I'm very busy. The factory is crawling with magisters, and our shipments to Arks are held up. Time is money. Don't waste my money. What do you want? Fish. This is a fish factory. I'm shipping fish to Arks. Now, please, there's the door. I suggest you use it. When you've been in business as long as I have, you learn that there's a market for everything. You just have to find it, or... A dark shadow passes across his face. Sometimes it finds you. That's privileged information. I have a trade to protect. Do I? But you're right, you don't seem the type. The answer to your question is, unsurprisingly, a man in a house. A man in a house buys all the void-tainted fish I can send him. That dark shadow crosses his face once more. He shivers. Not that I've ever met the man. Not sure I want to, if I'm honest. Absolutely not. I don't give away sensitive information like that to anyone who just asks for it. And I don't keep it lying around, neither. That really is enough now. I'm asking you to leave. Good day. The dwarf reaches into a barrel and pulls out a fish. His knife glides through the scales, crimson guts spilling out in its wake. The innards fall to the floor, landing in a pool of dark bile. You'd expect fish to smell, but these reek. Aye, oh, the coin's sweet, and the smell sure ain't. Mind you, the boss phoned a buyer for this lot, so my knife stays sharp and my pockets stay full. He runs his knife through another fish and flicks the blade, sending a shower of guts to the ground. I'd say your guess is as good as mine, except I got the sense not to ask any questions. Now why don't you march on? I ain't been paid to wag me chin. The dwarf turns back to his work, slicing and disemboweling fish after fish as the blood and black bile mix and swirl around his boots. Looking at the barrel, you see that someone has scrawled Black House on it in paint. You cast your eyes around to see that every barrel headed to Arks has the same inscription. Here, leave them barrels alone. I told you to take a hike, so scram. This place stinks, but some of these barrels look interesting. Thank you. 
Dripping with liquid sauce, this barrel is sealed and marked with a cross. From the barrel you sense a familiar power. It thrums in your bones, in your soul. Inside, you find not fish, but weapons. Powerful weapons. The kind of weapons the Magisters took from the Hollow Marshes. I'll yield to none.
I am come away with me, so be come, come die. What do you want? Boss is busy. Good. Boss could use some good news. Listen up. Don't waste his time. These are explosive times. Be respectful. I'm not here to chit chat with the likes of you. I brought you up from girl to woman, Marla. Like you was my own. This. He lifts his right arm, showing a white bandage beneath his ribs. A wet red spot shows through. This ain't the thanks I expected. Who sent you? <laughs> the formidable dwarf slams his fist on the side table. You hear a loud crack. Enough! Do you know they killed Anhar? Do ya? Start talking sense or I'll take that tongue right out of your mouth and fry it for supper. Bart. Cade. Get her to talk or bleed her out. She ain't one of mine anymore. His sneer travels from the restrained dwarf to you. And you. You better have a damn good reason for coming here. Let's move along, lady. This don't concern you. Step off, lest you want a taste. The battered dwarf pulls her lips back into a garish, open-mouthed grin, flashing blood-stained teeth. <laughs> I almost feel bad for you. Almost. Brave lass. Walks in in here now. I hope for your sake you've got good news for me. Family matter. She's one of mine. Acting like her brains are scrambled, though. Came after me with a knife. Lucky for me, she caught an old wound. Scar slowed down the knife. So, how'd you make it out of Fort Joy? <laughs> I've got to say I'm impressed. I love a good story. Here's one I heard lately. A group of strangers landed on the beaches outside town. Meister Seavers people. You one of her little seekers? Chasing down Godwoken and begging them to save us all? That's so. He leans back and narrows his eyes, looking you up and down. You know, the order's been going on about Godwoken for an eon now. Voidwoken's still lurking, though. And they're still all in folks off to the joy. So if you are who you say you are, what's the point of you? Ah, I should have guessed. I could help you. But last I heard you was working for the Magisters. Big shots at the boats. Now, why in the name of all the Earths would I help a worm like that?
An unpleasant smirk twitches around the corners of his mouth. Right. I reckon I could help you out. Depending on what you can do for me. Everything costs something round here. Only question is how much you're willing to pay. I've got people to maintain. You help me, I help you. Simple as that. He gestures towards the bandage across his side. Had a bit of family trouble lately. My girl Marla got it in her head to come after me with a short blade. That ain't like Marla. Ain't like her to pull the silent treatment either. Something's going on. And wouldn't you know it, that blade she used wasn't any normal bit of steel. Belonged to another of my people. Guy's name is Mordus. Bit of a loner, but smart as hell. I sent a few guys to go check on him, see if he knew what had got into Marla, but no one can find him. I'd like a word with the guy. That'd be up to him, wouldn't it? No one's seen him in a good few. I've got some people checking out his house near the tavern now, though. Tell them I sent you, and they'll let you know what they've found. Truth is, they might be glad to see you. Reckon a sorcerer will have better luck finding one of their own. Well, like I said, Maldus is a special guy. A sorcerer, matter of fact. Maybe even one of the ones Seaver's after. If there's something you want to find out from him, you might want to ask before I have my word with him. Here, you can take this off my hands. More suited to your kind, really. Good luck. Oh, this must be the place Lohar mentioned. It looks unassuming enough. The dwarf is unnaturally still. You might mistake her for a corpse, were it not for a slight twitch of her eyelids. She calmly opens her left eye, then her right. What do you want? Nah, nice quiet spot for a dwarf to get some shut eye. The dwarf unfolds her arms and shoots to her feet. All right, human. Well, I'm glad Lohar ain't left us here to wither. Those brutes are taking their sweet time down there. I gotta send word soon. Who knows? Anything that gives away what Mordus has been up to. Probably got all sorts of tricks for covering his tracks, but the goons downstairs should snip out something. That weird priest's been hanging around Loha for ages. Now he's vanished. Poof. Those half-wits below will know more. Get to it then. But tell the lunkheads that Glenna sent you before they bash your brains in. I've spotted something. What's this? I found something. A skull. Oh, it's missing an eye. As, as far as locks go, this one's pretty macabre. There we go. Finally. The door's opening. By Duna's dagger. You here to free us or kill us? The male dwarf expels two lungfuls of air and glances happily at his companion. We've only been fretting here for a few hours, but it's felt like days. That snot-nosed priest's as slippery as a snake in an oil drum. Ain't found nothing that lets on what Mordus is up to. Only thing we managed were to close that door and get us stuck. And if there's another door out there, never could find it. Lohar ain't gonna be pleased. 
Ain't no telling where that priest has gone to. Started acting all funny not so long ago, then flew the coop. Well, at first, he was just buddying around with Lohar and the rest, you know. But then he'd start looking all sickly and run off for a day or two. Then some stranger tried taking old Lohar down, but got himself caught and tied up. Ain't no coincidence Mordus went hanging around then. She taps her finger against her forehead. A woman knows things. Nothing's getting past me. Best we head off then. We've got business to attend to. Look out. Well, I see this will do. If I can get stuck, then I can get unstuck. Lohar will want to know of this. The shrine depicts Duna, yet has clearly seen better days. Scratches and fissures deface its exterior, and its eyes have been gouged hollow. You run your hands along the exterior until your fingers graze the button noted in the schematic. Your words are swallowed by the chamber's thick air. The stone is cold against your palm. If this figure once held power, it has since been depleted. There's no mistaking the sound of stone chafing stone. The entrance to the chamber grinds open, filling your lungs with slightly less stale air. Come, sister. What Better you get think? out there before Maldus makes it all the way past Arx. I asked you for a man, not a note. He takes the letter from your hands and reads it quickly, face hardening with anger as he reaches the end. Bloody God's damn spit-sucking weasel! This is bad. Not just for me and mine. Not just for you and yours. This is bad. For everyone. Hell if I know, but it don't sound good. Seems as though Mordus wasn't mine after all. Trouble is, I don't know whose he is, of course. That's why I haven't heard from the cave. Sabotage. Listen up, I need your help. We all do. Mordus has his hands on something dangerous. Something I was trying to protect us from. Not just my folks, the whole damn realm. Look, me and mine, we move classified cargo. Take it right off Magister ships and put it into the hands of those that will use it rightly. Trouble is, we came across something no one ought to have. Not the Magisters, not my folks. Not the gods themselves. I ordered it to be destroyed. I guess Mordus, whoever he's working for, wants it for themselves. That can't happen. The less you know, the better. Trust me. Stop Mordus and I'll take care of the rest. My people had an operation up in the caves outside town. Good access to red ships and plenty of privacy too. Haven't heard from them in a couple of days now. I thought maybe we'd lost the messengers to Voidwoken in the hills, but now I think it's worse than I thought. I bet my lucky left foot Maldus is in the cave. You've got to get to him before he gets his hands on that cargo. Pray to whoever you pray to that it ain't too late. Finally, someone with a little sense around here. Give me your map. I'll show you where we were operating, where I think Maldus will be. I don't want to know what'll happen if he gets what he's after.
careful. I've spotted Look a trap. Look out! I see a trap nearby. She's doing, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> is mine.
that. The void is strong here. Even the stone is infected. Looks like this is Loha's place, or what's left of it. Could Mordis have survived this? There's a void woken on the bridge ahead. But where's it going? The dwarf rocks on her haunches, gnawing at her own bloody knuckle. What are you doing? They're close. I can feel them. Run. For the love of the Seven, run.
The blindfolded statue is partly embedded in a rock face, reaching forth as if yearning to be free of the granite that surrounds her. You no longer look without, but within. You understand where your path must take you. Made it all the way here, you creeping little maggots. Have you wriggled up to bow to me? Has Lohar sent you to beg forgiveness for his sin? Ha! 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 Please! No! Mercy! Mercy! The Master Sorcerer throws up his pocked, cracked arms to defend himself as you step forward. The undead dwarf looks quickly over its shoulder, his gaze darting from shadow to shadow. Of course! Of course! Anything! Just name it! What? Source? I... The skeleton slowly lowers his arms, staring at you in disbelief. Of course! You're Godwoken! You seek power! Ultimate power. <laughs> and I'm worried we could not find common ground. Yes, God Woken, I can teach you. If you swear, you won't banish me to the afterlife. Praise be. Very well, God Woken. Listen carefully. Source and void, day and night, love and hate. One is meaningless without the other. To grow your source, to achieve your potential, you must embrace the void. The grinning skeleton reaches into the folds of his robes and pulls out a small black mass. It's covered in veins and oozing pus. Here, God Woken. Take a bite. The finest meal you'll find in this cave. The heart of a void woken. Perhaps not the most appetizing thing around, but if you truly want to channel more source. The skeleton extends his arm, jiggling the heart towards you. A glob of dark yellow pus oozes through the bones of his palm and drips to the ground. The thick pus explodes into your mouth, coating the back of your throat. You can feel it running down your throat like rancid custard. You start to retch, your body struggling to reject this intruder, but your teeth clamp down hard on the fibrous, gritty flesh as you force yourself to chew and swallow. Deep within you, you feel something change. Your soul opens up, and you feel it swell as new channels for source start to flow through you. You swallow all you can, and despite the meat in your stomach, you feel a new space inside you, a potential waiting to be filled. There, I held up my end of the bargain. I did as you asked, and now I'm getting as far from this cave as my bones will take me. Mordus looks at you in alarm. God's graves, please be quick. I, uh, I had no choice. They wanted to destroy the death fog. They haul barrels of the greatest weapons in the world off a ship, and then decide to throw them in the ocean. We couldn't let it happen. We needed it. So I... I took control. The power gifted to me. The power of more that came. The power to bend the feeble-minded to my will, and so much more. It was a gift from... It was a gift. I can't! He'll hear 
here. He'll know. He'll find me. He'll come. You can't help. No one can help. If he makes up his mind, nothing can protect you. I can't tell you. Mordus takes a step back, looking about in half-crazed panic. I can't. I, I can't. Not now. It's too late. It's all too late. The dwarf sets his jaw and firmly refuses to speak until you ask him something else. What? No, I can't. You grab the dwarf's old, brittle arm and follow through with your knee. There's a dry snapping sound as the crumbling bone cracks and gives way. Ah! No! Stop! Stop! I beg you! I'll tell you! You relent, and the dwarf stumbles back, cradling his fractured arm and whimpering. It's... it's him! The one the seven rejected! The god! The dwarf is interrupted by another crack. You see his femur has developed a break. The fracture spreads, shearing the bone in two. Morda stumbles to the ground, oddly silent. He looks up, and you see that his jaw is cracked, broken, and falling to pieces. Fissures are starting to run across his skull, and his ribs start to snap and fall one by one. Mordus tries to raise his remaining arm to his head, splaying his fingers wide, but the digits are viciously snapped off by some unseen force. You hear the tiniest whimper from the skeleton before his face caves in, as if smashed with an invisible mace, and the body lies still and silent. This is incredible. I've never felt so alive. Don't worry about it, says Loha. Quietest work around, says Loha. Well, I don't see him here, cold as the stone he's lying on. It will be fine, my ass. And here I was, the fool, believing him. The ghost swings a foot to kick its old body in frustration, but the boot sails straight through her corpse. with a dwarf seal. Fine paper. It looks important. The dwarf's royal seal. It couldn't be. Open it at once. This could be valuable. The lock's melting away. More just turn the key into an amulet. Cunning. Did I thought this cave didn't get any more grim. I do not want to know what that smell is. Death, most likely. Watch your step. Look out. I see a trap nearby. You ran much longer. Loha rubs his forehead beneath his hood and stares at the ground. As you approach, his face hardens and he stands at his full height. So? Loha takes the amulet and turns it over in his hand. He pockets it matter-of-factly. What did you find in the cave? Dead, more dead, and Mordus with them. I owe you. Whole realm owes you, really. But I'll do my best to settle that debt myself. Take this key. Nicked it from the Whites. It opens a chest in the Magister Barracks, second floor. Be careful getting out here. If they spot you, 
It'll be lights out. Should be some good stuff in there, though. Real good. Right. Yes. Indeed. Apart from Mordus, I can think of three folks in the area who'd be worth your time. Give me your map. First, a demonologist. My people reported he passed through here not long ago. Avoided the Magisters very carefully, that one. Jayhan's his name. I'll show you where we last saw him. Next is an easy one. Well, maybe not easy, but obvious. Riker, master of the old graveyard. Now there's a sorcery you don't want to double cross. Not far from here either. Last one I can think of may not be useful. There's an elf called Sahela. Young but powerful. She got carted off to the joy. Her people have been spotted in the area though, and I wouldn't have put it past them to spring her out. Here, look where I've marked. You'll find them. They worship that girl, like she were their flesh-munching god himself. And there you have it. I hope one of them can tell you what you need to know. I guess there's no hiding it now. It's like this. I didn't sign up to move Death Fog. Other weapons, even soul-forged weapons, sure. But Death Fog? <laughs> Absolutely not. When we found a bomb on a Magister's ship, I was told to ship it to Arx along with the rest of the stuff. But I couldn't. I didn't want my people to have it any more than theirs. Nothing good can come of Death Fog. Nothing. Mordor's disagreed, obviously. But thanks to you, he's dead. I'll go destroy the Death Fog bomb myself. Make sure no one can get their hands on it. Ever. In an instant, Lohar goes completely white. No! What have we done? I don't deserve your kindness. I should have told you before, I just... No, I've got no excuse. I'm gonna do what I can to stop the Queen. I suggest you try the same. Get to Arx. End this before Justinia does. What is it? I have a lot on my mind. What are you doing with that? Hand it over. He quickly reads over the letter, as though making sure nothing has changed. Could you brought this to me? I'd hate to think what might have happened to you if you hadn't. I almost feel bad for you. Almost. 